Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and welcome to this week's episode of the Podiatry Legends podcast. Podcast is on to help you feel, see, and think differently about the podiatry profession, especially if you are a podiatry student. I hope you go back and listen to all the past episodes and you realize how super awesome this profession is and all the doors that are open to you, which is why I have my special guest on today, Stacey Keating. Now, she is a Curtin University graduate. She's in Western Australia. She's had multiple podiatry clinics, but now she's set up this, this cool business called Kid Zoles, K-I-D-Z-O-L-E-S, just so you get the spelling right. So, Stacey, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me on. No, well, you were recommended that you were a must, uh, a must-have guest from Jackson. Oh, wow. oh that's so, lovely, isn't it? So the pressure's on. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, no, just <laughs> There's never any pressure on here. And I, like I always say, there's nothing I can't edit out. Oh, fantastic. And usually <laughs> when I do, most of the editing is done on me. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, I'm usually the one All that right. says, uh. says the wrong thing. So just to go back a little bit, um, what got you into podiatry in the first place? Um, well, I actually started off in journalism, believe it or not, <laughs> which was journalism. so not my forte, which is why I pretty much I lasted, I think, three months tops. And then I went, no, nah, it's not for me. So, um, so we'll go back a sec then. So yeah. at school, yeah. what made look, you think journalism as a career look, choice? I really don't know. I think I kind of finished school and, you know, you're 17, 18 and everyone's going, what do you want to do with your life? Yeah. And you're so young. How do you, how do you actually know that? So I knew I was good at, you know, drama and, and English lit and that sort of thing. But I also had the science side as well. And I went, okay, I'll go this side. And it just, it, I knew straight away as soon as I started, it just wasn't me. It what about just, it didn't you like? Um, I don't know. It just felt, for me, it false. Um, and there was, it was just too, yeah, too marketed. Just didn't, didn't really like it. Didn't sit with me. So and what, I, what do you mean by false? Like right just, from the start? Um, they were I think right you... from the start as we were sort of learning how to write an article and how to capture the audience and the headlines and the subjects and, and just that, I just, you know, just, it didn't ring to me and I, yeah. I although I understood the principles it was just not something that I kind of you know my soul resonated with so I just instantly knew that nah, this isn't what I want to do um and I just decided to defer the year so I took the year off okay and at that time I was working I w worked in the candy bar at a, at a cinema <laughs> nothing, nothing wrong with that pretty much you know served a lot of popcorn um did a little bit of traveling but not much and then um you know, it kind of came to crunch time where I realised all my friends were, they were in uni, they'd already done their first year. Yeah. And I was sort of like, oh gosh, I've got a bit of catch up to do. Uh, I've got to get into uni this year. What am I going to do? And I had, I think at the end of high school, they gave us this big um, blue jobs book. I kind of started flicking through that. And I came across, you know, podiatry and, I'm, you know, fairly intrigued. But in this job book, it kind of had like the average salary, um, you know, the length of degree, et cetera. And at that time, all those years back, it was a three-year undergraduate, which kind of sung to me a bit because I'd already yeah. been a year behind. And I'd sort of, you know, I'd grown up in sort of middle to lower class Australia, and I knew that I didn't want to ever have to struggle um, financially. And so when I saw like $60,000 as the average, you know, income back then, I was like, right, that's me. Let's give it a go. And that was really, yeah. We must was have been very... looking. We must have been looking at the same book <laughs> there you go. because it was very similar <laughs> to, like I've said in the past, that it was one of the reasons I chose podiatry was for yeah. that exact reason. Yeah, just very pragmatic about that decision at the time, and I think. Um, Did you know, you know what some... it was? Yeah. Look, no, not really. When I first came <laughs> across it, and so I like kind of delved into it a bit more. And I knew, like, I also looked at the intake for other, co like, similar courses like physiotherapy, which at that time podiatry was under the School of Physiotherapy. And I could see this massive intake of people, and I wanted to graduate with a job. So, you know, in podiatry, I think my year, we started off with around 50 students. By the time we graduated, there was about 26. So some yeah. people did, you know, end up leaving to go to physio or go to become doctors or, you know, deferred a year. But... Um, I came out and I got a job. So that was really the overall intention. Um, but so you achieved the I goal? Started, yeah, you achieved the goal that you set out to, to yeah, get? Yeah, look, that job. financial goal, I suppose, yes, was I wanted a job. But as soon as I started the course, I just, like, I loved it. 
like every part of it. And um, I just knew this is me. This is what I want to do. And I really like even now, you know, it's 18 years later, I love podiatry. And I can honestly say I love what I do. I like so, hearing that. Um, yeah, I really do. And I've just been so fortunate that, you know, I've got that little book and I went, you know, trusted myself in that intuition and went, yep, this is what we're doing. And, you know, here I am and I'm I'm still here. <laughs> so it's good that it's great that, well, it's good for the profession that journalism sucked. Yeah. <laughs> and so do I you, appreciate that. That's very kind. <laughs> do you look, yeah, you know, like with COVID at the moment, yeah, with, there's so many reporters on TV that are just constantly, you know, yeah, every premiere is having meetings every day and, so do you look at those journalists and what some of the questions are asked and go, oh, I'm so glad no. I, I didn't go down that path? Yeah, no, I mean, that doesn't really, I don't even, I don't think journalism even pops in my mindset anymore. But yeah, I do think, you know, I try not to watch the news too much. Yeah. Um, and I do, I'm like fairly protective of that, you know, energy and mindset. Um, and yeah, I do think that just wouldn't have been the right, the right job for me at all. Okay. No, that makes yeah. makes makes yeah. perfect sense. But you probably find <laughs> that strength that you had, you've probably used it in podiatry with your writing and that English literature. Because well, my background was art. I was going to be an art teacher. Yeah. Wow. And ended up doing podiatry. But I know that whole creative side has mm. helped me so much. So I assume your writing skills have been beneficial with everything you do. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, I still have to get my husband to edit the grammar. <laughs> <laughs> That's what grammar is. You know, I pretty much write like I talk, and sometimes yeah. that's not ideal. Um, but yeah, look, I know what I kind of put myself on in the other side and say, what would I like to hear? Yeah. Um, and, you know, how can I reassure someone? Okay, and, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. So your husband is a podiatrist as well. Yeah. <laughs> Did you meet at university? No, we actually met um, a little, another funny story. Um, he, I worked my first year in WA. Yeah. And just, you know, with the jobs, I had a couple of part-time jobs, a um, bit of variety. I worked for a sports clinic and and then also just some general care sort of stuff. Um, but I just wasn't making enough money to really, you know, save and do anything with. So I started looking abroad and came across, believe it or not, a job out in Gippsland in Victoria that was advertised at that, like, $60,000 that I'd seen in the job book. And I ah, went, that's yes. me. <laughs> Meant and I also be. had some, yeah, I had some friends that had gone over the previous year and worked for that company as well. Um, and so they were like, look, there's a job. And, you know, just all sort of the contract came. I signed it and off I went. And I met um, Matt. He was actually um, coming back. He'd come back from Newcastle working as a podiatrist there to manage um, the Warrigal location. And What I was it like him. stepping out of your comfort zone? Oh, scary. <laughs> was you know, I would have been, oh, maybe 20... 22, 23 at that time, I think. Yeah. And, um, you know, like I lived out of home for a while then, maybe three years and had my younger sister with me as well. And so when I went to Victoria, it was um, not much cash in the bank. I remember I had like a little camping chair that I folded out, you know, sent over yeah. like a TV. I bought a mattress and I had this tiny little unit and I kind of survived off that until I got my first couple of paychecks where I could, you know, fit the fit the unit out in furniture. Um, but you know what? It, I just grew so much by knowing I had to be independent and that I didn't have that, like, security network to fall back on. Yeah. You know, if, my, if I was out on the road and my tyre blew, I had to learn to change the tyre. Can't call mum or dad, you know, like, <laughs> so for me, it was, you know, I look back at that move as one of the best things I ever did. So Matt, you said he, so he was working in Newcastle, was he? Yeah, he worked, um, he worked for, well, it was Gippsland Foot Clinic at the time. So he worked yeah. for them his first year, first couple of years out. And then he moved to Newcastle and worked a bit there and then came back and worked for the same company again, but managing um, that Warrigal Clinic. And I was, yeah, so I was working for him, um, well, with him, and yeah. he was also my neighbour as well. So <laughs> oh, okay. not that I knew when I, um, you know, leased the unit, but there was three podiatrists living in a unit next door and Matt was one of them yeah. as well. So. so quick question, who hmm. asked who out? Um, oh, look, I think it probably was, maybe it was me in the end. I'm not sure. Um <laughs> Just, just wondering. We, yeah, just, yeah, I'm just look, curious. We, yeah. 
we um, had really similar interests. So, you know, I'd be at the gym after work a lot and he was always there. And then it was yeah. kind of like, okay, well, why not go together? Um, and then I think, you know, it was, we just were spending a lot of time together. And I think it wasn't until I realized that someone else was interested in him that I kind of went, oh, hang on. <laughs> yeah, hang on, this is my good interest. I think I, think I like him. <laughs> so I think it was probably me, yeah. Okay, so you guys worked, worked together um, in Victoria. Yeah. And then from there, you decided to both for, set, set up your own clinic? Yeah, well, Matt actually bought the clinic. So he, the year after, I was like, am I going back to Perth? You know, I've been here for a year. Yeah. And he had the opportunity to buy the Warrigal um, practice. And so he kind of said, you know, do you want to do this? Um, and it was just such a, a, an amazing opportunity that, you know, you just couldn't turn that down. And so, yeah, so he he ended up buying it and I just kind of – you know, jumped in the trenches with him and we just worked our little bottoms off <laughs> as you do. Like when you first open a business yeah. or run it, get into business, you you know, you're doing that six or seven days a week and it's just go, go, go. And, you know, you don't necessarily feel exhausted by that, but it's kind of exhilarating um, because you can see, you know, the, the end product of all that hard work. Oh, it's true. And, There's nothing better than yeah. well, having your own business and you know that, every ounce of effort you put into it, you're either going to get the rewards or you're going to get your bum kicked. Yeah, so true. So there's always yeah, a result. So it can either be good, nothing or bad, but everything you do, um, you have to take responsibility for it. So you can yeah. Um, yeah, share it. Yeah, you get the accolades and you also get the disappointment if things don't work. Yeah, it's a massive learning curve as well, I think. And, um, you know, I, I, I just loved business. I loved I loved having our own practices. I loved growing it. I loved our team. Did you think you enjoyed just... it much, as much as what you did? Like the no, business ownership? I, mean, I don't think I, well, obviously I, I, I just came out thinking I was going to, you know, earn that wage. Mm. And it wasn't until um, we sort of got the business and, and started working in the back end of, of the business and running the business itself and working with the team more closely and, I just, I think it made me be a better podiatrist. Yeah. So knowing that, you know, um, we were kind of like the face of that company and and that brand and that, um, you know, if we weren't at the at the top level of what we knew and, and had that skill base, you know, how are we going to attract podiatrists to come and work for us in the first place? Um, but secondly, what was that overall sort of reputation? And that was a, repu um, a representation of us and who we were. And I just, I kind of thrived in that, um, that whole system. I loved it. It's so good to hear. I always mm. say, and now I know some people, podiatrists are going to listen to this statement I'm about to make and will yeah. want to hunt <laughs> me down. But okay. <laughs> I honestly believe that the podiatrists that usually have really good, well-run clinics are usually better podiatrists. Yeah. Oh, I and, think so and I've just seen it so oh, well. many times. <laughs> I've seen great podiatrists all over, but you know, some of, oh, yeah, yeah, this, the community that I have around me in the podiatry world, I'm mostly, you know, my friends are mostly business owners themselves. So I'm really fortunate to have that community around me. Um, and I definitely see that they, they push themselves that extra yeah. level, you know, they, they want to be great. They want to be, um, you know, at the forefront of their profession. And they want to have a team that looks up to them and they want to have that mentoring role as well. And you can only have that mentoring role if you're seeking out more knowledge constantly. Yeah. And it's um, not just business knowledge. It's knowledge in podiatry. And that's, that's what I've seen time and time again. And the, the people who, some of the podiatrists that I know who are bitter and twisted, um, <laughs> who have really. Surely it, not. <laughs> yeah, there's a few who have poor businesses who are always complaining, oh, yeah, they must be breaking all the rules to have such a successful business. Mm. They're usually the people you do not see at conferences, you do not see on webinars, and that's yeah. what, yeah, and, and yeah. I think their business is a reflection on them as a podiatrist. But having said that, I do know some awesome podiatrists that don't own their own business who mm. are employees. So you don't have to be have your own yeah, business no. to be an awesome podiatrist. Yeah, you can have. I mean, you've also got that whole academic skill set too, don't yeah. you, where you have, you know, those podiatrists, incredible podiatrists, but and also um, just incredible academics and do so much for the profession that way. And I think, you know, that's just as important. We need those mm. academics that, you know, you know, get the articles written and, the, and, and do that for our profession because that's what keeps us moving forward as yeah, well. Yeah, because I wouldn't do it. Yeah. 
Um, oh, gosh. No, gosh. I'll, I'll let them do all the work. I'll just read it. You know, you got to play to your strengths, give don't me, you? <laughs> give me the synopsis, please. But it's also when I say like awesome podiatrists that don't have to have their own business, but usually really good podiatrists that are you know, highly skilled and trained will normally work at really good podiatry businesses. They're not going to work exactly. with someone who's bitter and twisted, who's no. down, down a small arcade with beige walls. Mm, that's it. I mean, we've had so many podiatrists in the past that have come and worked for us and said, you know, I nearly left the profession um, because they just, yeah. the environment that they came out to as graduates just, you know, sucked the life out of podiatrists. And that, you know, that breaks your heart because we know the the greatness of the profession and, um you know, then they come and they work in this vibing team culture and, um, you know, they start to become these incredible podiatrists in their own right because they've got that energy behind them. Yeah, I know. I, everything you said, I agree with you 100%. <laughs> and this wasn't something I was even planning on talking about. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm, well, there I'm, you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that we did. So so we know that you, where you graduated from, we know how you got into business for yourself. We know your partner is a podiatrist. Mm-hmm. So you eventually moved back to Western Australia. Yeah. And then you set up an orthotic lab. Yeah. So we, when we moved back to WA, we had five um, podiatry practices in um, Victoria. Yeah. And then we moved back to WA mainly because my son was, or our son was close to two and I wanted to be around family and, you know, pulling on those heartstrings and (laughs) and the hormones probably at the time. (laughs) Um, and so we moved back, we start, we opened a new clinic in Perth, um, from scratch, which we, you know, sort of never really done before. We'd already always bought practices or had, you know, a couple of days running and, and grown them. Yeah. So that was a, a new challenge for us. Like, let's start from scratch and pump this thing and see what we can do in a year. Um, and then Matt was also super keen to start producing our own orthotics and have more control over, um, that as well. And that's when we started up premium orthotics and we also brought on a couple of podiatry contracts as well that we made the orthotics for and that was just um the knowledge for us in in orthotic manufacture we just it, in one year was exponential oh yeah um, just to be at the forefront you know making those devices and being completely accountable for how the fit was um yeah i just you know, as, as difficult as it was, because it was a fairly stressful period. Yeah. I'm not going to say do that, you know, do that tentatively. <laughs> so when you started though, when you started the lab, was it back old school plaster casts? No, it wasn't. Back in form, um, we, you, didn't, you didn't start no, that way? No, we did um, CNC routers. So and we had the Delcam um, software as well that we brought okay. in. And I remember we started it off in my parents' um, back shed. So they had this big shed out the back and, we, we started off in there and then quickly realised that we can't keep it here. This has got a whole lot of dust. <laughs> and so we found a, I found a factory to move it yeah. to and got all the proper exhaust and whatnot about. But I remember having that router dropped off and then also having the software dropped off and them kind of going, this is the router and how it moves. This is the software and how it works. Now, we don't actually know how they kind of move <laughs> together. So, like, good luck and being like, oh, <laughs> But, um, you know, we figured it out and I'm so, we're so lucky because Matt, like my husband, he's just, he's got an incredible brain yeah. um, and for problem solving as well. So he was just straight in there and I can think kind of thrived under that pressure a little bit as well. Um, and that was, you know, we had these great orthotics and we were turning them around so a patient could come in and see us and the next day they could have their orthotics fitted to them. And that was, you know, helped us grow that business so quickly. Yeah, and that's what sets podiatry clinics apart are the ones that are prepared to invest in technology and are doing it. One, you can make more money from it, yes, in the long run, but it's convenience for the patient. So we same thing, we installed a milling machine in my clinic in Cairns. Ah, oh, yeah. And we worked out it took 12 and a half minutes to mill out a pair of orthotics. So mm. we did have a same day service if you wanted it, but most patients it was always 24 hours. Yeah, incredible, and isn't it? Just providing that service set us so far apart from everybody else that was in the area. Yeah, it's just value adding, isn't it? You yeah. think of it like from their point of view, um, what sets you apart from the other podiatrists down the road is the value you can you can give to that patient. Um, and I think that, you know, that transpires through and through. And it still does for me, even with kid souls and how I approach, you know, that prefabricated orthotic company it's it's value 
Okay, you now now you've touched on kid. Now zoles. I'm, I'm provided the segue there. Okay, you did. There's a segue <laughs> straight into kid zoles. Yeah. So you're sitting at home one night. You've got the lab. You got your clinics going. You're doing everything. Mm. You're keeping busy. Uh, you just got one child still, or did you have multiple? Oh, look. I think within no, no. We've got two now, but I think we yeah. the first two years of the new business. No, I fell pregnant yet. Yep. After that. So okay, so you got all this happening. Year, grab, yep. What made you decide to start doing kids' souls? A completely different business idea. Yeah, so we we actually started with life souls. So we've got like an adult range. We started that purely because um, we had you know six clinics, and we yeah. thought you know why are we getting in someone else's prefabs when we thought you know um, we could do a better job. Yeah, do a better job. And we had also um, some of our clinics were in fairly low demographic areas. So custom orthotics for some of these patients just weren't an option. And our podiatrists were becoming really frustrated with some of the prefabs they were getting and not being able to get the results. So Mm. we just sort of went, okay, we've got the knowledge now. Let's put something together and get it done. And originally we were just milling them like through the router. We were just mill, mill, mill. Um, And then... um, we decided, you know, we'd make our own and hand ground, sent, came back, you know, got the podiatrist to test them for us until we were finally happy with a bit of a range and then looked at getting those manufactured. And oh, so um, then you sent them off. So you made up the, like the yeah, template and then pretty sent much made them off. the designs, um, yeah. got the drawings done for what we wanted, um, you know, and then sent those where we kind of hand ground our, um, once we'd milled it and went, this is actually what we want it to look like. Yeah. Um, and then sent those off. Um, and I already had a pre-existing relationship with um, a manufacturer over in China and he's just been amazing. I still I still use him today and he's he's just, uh, and, you know, he's incredible. He gets stuff done for me and he, he realises how picky I am and he, you know. And you still have that side me. of the business? You still have that side of the business? The life souls? Yeah, 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 we do. We um yeah, it's got it's it's going okay. It's not kicking any major goals. How, how, it, how did you spell that one? That's L like life yeah. souls. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you went with life souls, but you didn't go yeah. with kid souls. Oh no, well we we would have loved to, but see there's a um, there's a massive American company that does kids souls already. Ah, so, okay. So that was my sort of like I'm a great podiatrist, not not awesome on the um branding side of things so when I realized I had this sort of panicked moment and went oh my gosh what do I do (laughs) so um yeah so we've gone with gone with kids zoles um just to sort of separate that interest apart and yeah it's great I mean we we, you look at the two different websites or profiles we're completely different um companies but yes so it was life souls um, they, they if, still, if people want to get life souls, how do they how do they get oh, those? Just go to the website lifesouls.com. Easy. And if they okay. want to um they want a wholesale list, then they can just um there's a contact form on there, and I'll shoot that through as well. So yeah, awesome. so yeah, well, so we've got those, and then um I had I think you know been thinking about kids souls um during that time and sort of half done templates, but you know, still busy in the business game and just didn't really have that time. Yeah. Um, And then, you know, that sort of rounded off when we, um, you know, basically merged and sold off to the My Foot Doctor um, group. And so in doing that. So what did you end up selling off to them? Just the 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 dietary clinic and the the lab? Yeah, so the five um, Victorian clinics, because, you know, we were at that stage when they sort of came up into the discussion we were you know managing those clinics from yeah. remote um which is always a bit tricky um and that would go back every two to three months and see the team and that was super important just so that they know you know you're not the person back there banking the check for you yeah. do, you do actually have an interest um but yeah it just became increasingly difficult with you know a family and also the business here and the lab and uh, i think they just came along at a really good time for us where we went you know, yet we are ready to sort of consolidate back a little bit and just mm. not have so many hats at the one time. Um, so, yeah, so the Victorian clinics, um, they went and then we sold um, the, well, obviously the Perth clinic and we bought back shares in that clinic as well. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm still, yeah, still going treat down there as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so that just came along at that time. And I think, you know, having not, 
all of that stuff that you do in the back end, like you would know as a business owner, your job doesn't finish when, you know, you clock off at five o'clock. You, no. you, you know, you've got so much going on. And I think in podiatry as well, you're often the marketer, the advertiser, you, your own legal to a degree, you know, you're seeking out. But it's um, everything. It. It's, it's yeah. everything in life. People only ever see the surface. Mm. Like an iceberg, they see the tip, they don't see what's going on underneath. And it's even so true. Even podcasting. People might listen to an hour podcast, for example, and go, wow, I should start a podcast. <laughs> but there's this thing called, uh, like, it's called pod fading. And yeah, right. 93% of all podcasts that I've ever created, and there's over like 600,000 of them, 93% never go more than nine episodes. Really? Wow. Yeah. It's called pod fading because people don't oh, realize wow. how much work is involved, not just, you know, like you yeah. and I, we organize the time, yeah, organizing a guest, uh, finding a guest first, organizing yeah. the guest, getting it done, doing the recording. Then there's the editing afterwards, and then it's the promoting of it. Yeah. So there, there's a, a lot, lot more in that the people background. don't see. Yeah. yeah. Podiatry business is a lot more. Oh, huge. Yeah, huge. Um, definitely. And I feel like, I think when we, you know, we sold, I, I kind of missed it. Like I really missed <laughs> all the, because my brain was just used to vibrating up here, yeah. you know, like I'm used to doing all of this stuff and making it happen. And, um, and then I had that, that clarity or that space to go, hang on a minute. I don't think I can, I think I need more. Yeah. Um, and I think I've always had since having the business, that sort of entrepreneurial spirit. And so, and so has my husband, Matt. And, um, and I kind of approached him about, you know, you know how I did those designs ages ago and do you think I should, you know, get it happening? And my kids were getting older as well. And, um, yeah, he's kind of in the background route, like as my like supporter rallying me along. And, and I, you I need think that. a lot, yeah. And I, I, like a lot of the times where I felt like, you know, that fear of, oh, should I go, should I do this? He's in there going, nah, do it. Like, what have you got to lose? Like, what's the worst that could really happen? I love that um, saying. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. you got to live by that, don't you? Because I don't want to get to the end of my life and go, I wonder what or if or should I have or. Um, and I think, you know, I kind of want to model that for my kids as well. And I feel definitely um, like I've got that responsibility to show them, you know, yeah, I'm a mum. I'm a, I'm a working mum. I, I do have to, you know, juggle all these different roles. But I also am, I'm still allowed to have a passion and something that, you know, just lifts my spirit and, you know, they can see it. They can see how much I love kids souls and, and how much um, energy I put into it, um, sometimes to the detriment <laughs> of them, which they come up and tap me and go, Mama, can you finish working now? <laughs> like, can, can you feed me? Can we have some food? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, please, Mum. How old are they now? Um, so Will's 10 and my daughter's six and she'll be seven soon. All right, okay. um, but they, you know, they love it. Um, awesome role model for you. What are they? Yeah, and I think that's so important as women. You know, You're like we women, we need to champion other women, and I think our our daughters need to see that you know we can do whatever we mm. want to do. You just got to set your mind to it. And and yeah, you've you know, there's been points in in my career where I've thought it was going a certain way, and the same with kids' souls. You know, I I thought initially. It was going to be, okay, I'll just get in there and I'll stock podiatrists because, you know, these insoles are awesome. Everyone's going to want them in my head. Um, <laughs> and, you know, like, this is great. Um, and, yeah, I started, a, a course, like the fr my friends that were in that sort of business scenario, they instantly yeah. went, you know, I know what Stacey's all about, bring them in. Um, but then it, there was this challenge of trying to break through and get other podiatrists to have a little look and at what I'm doing over here and and have a listen. And I think sometimes in podiatry as well, we can get quite set in our ways. You know, we've been using a certain thing for a certain mm. time and that feels comfortable. Um, and that was a really big challenge for me to try and break through. And I just went, okay, well, maybe this isn't, maybe I have to, I have to pivot here and I have to look at this more online because I know what I've got is great. I, yeah. You know, did you get any rejection? Oh, yeah. I yeah had how did one, that feel? <laughs> Did the, did the first one sort of like, oh, cut really deep? Oh, no. I mean, rejection. I had one podiatrist that said to me, oh, look, they're great. I understand what you're doing. Can't stock them in my clinic. And I was like, okay, well, you know, that's fair enough. And they were like, look, I just don't want my podiatrist to start using 
prefabs and not use yeah. custom orthotics. And you know what? Like, I like, you know, that's the business model. I get it. Mm. Um, and so uh, that was a big sort of a step back for me because I, you know, I kind of probably had removed my business hat for a while and I can, I can kind of understand that to a degree, but then I was also like, but this is awesome. I've got an awesome product. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I just went, you know what, I'm going to take a different different angle with this, a, a different pivot on this, and we're really going to push the online market for those people that, you know, aren't seeking podiatry services or maybe just can't afford to go and see a podiatrist and are really looking in that space. And so that's where I took the business from there. Okay, so podiatrists, can, so podiatrists can order them directly from you, but they can, the, yeah. the public can just order them as well if they need they to. They can, yeah, yeah. And that's, to be to be honest, like I've got a couple of podiatry clinics that do order them um, from me, but my main market really is that online platform. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I know some podiatrists would listen to this and go, oh, you've stabbed the profession in the back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like you're selling directly to the public. But yeah, look, they can think that way. I just don't the thing is, if, if they, if the whole podiatry profession supported what you were doing, you never would have gone down that path. <laughs> nice and simple. Yeah, it's your fault. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, um, I just, I just don't operate from that mindset. I think, yeah. uh, like, I just see that there's so many patients out there, right? And oh, yeah. so. I've had this program now launched since May and I think if any podiatrist is really up in arms and worried about that, they just need to look at their patient load and has it dropped since I, you know, have launched my program? I'd say it, it probably hasn't. Like, yeah. they're all re um, because it's, it's a very different market. The market that is accessing this sort of program is the parents that take their um, kids to the GP and say, my son's, you know, got heel pain and um, they might say, oh, go and do a bit of rolling or something, you know, yeah. and they they look for more. And that's where I am. I'm in that space. Um, and I and also, it's a lead you know, into podiatry too. So if somebody oh. did that as a child, used a pre-made device, went to Kid mm. Zoles, mm. and I take it that's kidzoles.com as well? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> sort of <punt. laughs> Super simple. Yeah. So if they did that first off as the child is growing, they'll probably get to a certain point. That child will get to a certain age maybe playing more sport and all of a sudden they've started to gain confidence in a professional device, something that's been designed by a podiatrist and they go, maybe now it's time to see a podiatrist. And yeah. they then go down, have the proper assessment, custom made yeah. orthotics and, and go down that path. Well, I think any way we can sort of develop and build the profession is um, only a good thing. Um, and yeah, I'm in a different space at the moment. Um, but I also, um, you know, I offer a 30-day money-back guarantee as well. So with my programs, um, if I don't get the results, then the parent only needs to give me a, a buzz, like email me or call me, yeah. and I'm, like, more than happy to refund them. Actually, I, I don't actually want to take their money if I don't get the results for so them. what's the programs you're talking about? So the one that I've just launched back in May was the heel pain program. So that's um, for kids with severs or severs or calcaneal apophysitis, however you want to. Yeah, heel pain. Um, approach we'll that it. one, yeah. yeah, heel pain. yeah. For the general public, heel pain. Yeah, heel pain. Kids mm. heel pain. Um, and so that's a basically a four week program. It's an online course, and then you also get a toolkit that comes along as well. Um, so that's got your kids soles. It's got an exercise band. It's got some heel lifts in there, and then they go through a structured um, stretch and strengthening program as well. That's a graduated program um, for those kids, and they can access that all online. Um, and yeah, it's like it's it's kicking some major goals. Like we've yeah. at the moment, we've got a hundred percent success rate. Um, I haven't had, I'm like, and I never, like when I offered the guarantee, it was because I didn't want to have a pay, a, a, like a patient or not a patient, a customer in this case, go through that program um, and still be in pain at the end and just kind of leave it there. Yeah. I wanted, I, like, I want them to come to me and say, look, you know, little Johnny or whatever, he's still in pain. And I can go, okay, well, that shouldn't be the case. So if that's the case, here's your money back. And where do you live? These are your local podiatrists. See, that's please, great. Go, please go seek their help, you know, because um, if I know this program that I've created, it works for majority of those kids. Yeah. So there are going to be those kids that maybe have been misdiagnosed. And they're not actually Sever's kids um, or it's a really chronic end of that, that you know, spectrum of that sort of um of severs 
Do you and have a uh, do you have a, an age limit that you go up to with the devices? Yes. So, um, well, at the moment they go up to a US um, nine, um, soon to be US twelve. Um, so they're just coming in um, because what I noticed is that there were a lot of kids that were um, coming through that with like massive feet, like size yeah. ten. <laughs> I'm like, my goodness. So um, yeah. So that we have got that larger sizing there as well. But the designs that I've created, they do change. So I've got like basically the range when I first started Kid Souls. It was just about um, creating changing designs because of the way that a child's foot develops as um, growth plates fuse, um, just the level of activity that they're doing, how they move, um, and just not putting them into that standard um, sort of mod root device that we yeah. tend to, you know, replicate that we have for, for adults and then we kind of squash them down like make little mini children's versions of them or at the other end of that, the, the big UCBL devices. And my devices are really about everyday active kids. So I'm not really looking at those neuro kids. That's not where these devices sit. Um, and I think, you know, I'm very... Um, very open about that in my branding. This isn't one fits all. This is everyday active kids um, with no neurological concerns there. So um, I've made these devices to have probably less control if possible. Yeah. Nice little pivot movements. I work through the extrinsic muscle function of the foot and ankle. What material right. are they made from? They're just made from EVA. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, they're, they're going really well. So just a medium density EVA. Um, lots of proximal control factors. We do a bit of pitching in them as well. And we've, you know, cuboid notch just to stabilize them as well. So on those, that perineal. Um, and, and do they have a certain time frame that they last for that they need to be replaced? Or is it one pair, wear them out and then see how you're doing? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, okay. I haven't had anyone come back. So yeah, yeah no, that's I would right. hope not. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, the density is working really well at the moment. And that's something that if it didn't, we would change. Um, but I think, yeah, we've, we've Got it right at the moment. Your website's nice. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm just scrolling through it at the moment. Having a look. Yeah, yes. so oh, that's like why I was just I, asking about the materials yeah. because I could I materials was pretty sure it was a I knew it was an EVA. And I just wanted to like come from a different you know avenue. Like we see now, I think in the past with brands, um, you know, you just you see the brand, you get on the website, you have a look at things that you don't see. Who's behind that? Who's who yeah. are the podiatrists back there that are making these? And and I so I wanted to be really authentic in how I um, launched Kid Souls and said, hey, this is I am a podiatrist. Um, this is my prefabricated orthotic company. Um, this is who I am and what I'm about. Um, and this is why I'm doing it. And so I just wanted to to make these orthotics so that kids can you know they can stay active. Um, you know they, that's great for their their mental health and. And their mindset as well and we just need to look you know more at the person and not just the problem here mm. as well and i think that's what facilitated me in towards you know i just had the orthotics at first and then i was going oh my gosh am i letting you know am i letting these kids down by not having that stretch and strengthening program i love the education that you attach mm. to the product it's not just order a pair of orthotics online and here you go put them in your shoes and they never want to hear from you again it's one you got the guarantee which i like yeah but it's also the education and the other packs, the stuff that you yeah. put on them. And I think a lot of yeah. podiatrists could actually just learn from that with their own patients is don't just give them a product, give them a package yeah. of, of yeah. what you're doing. Oh, without a doubt. You have to value add in, in whether you're in private practice or whether you've got a prefabricated company like me. I had to set myself apart because this is um, definitely a um, very, very, large there's lots of orthotic companies out there oh, heaps yeah um you know and so for me coming in as a like a, a late bloomer i suppose in that prefab orthotic company world um what what was my point of difference as well um what am i hoping to achieve and where am i adding more value mm. and that's um you know i just looked at it from if i was a mum and my child had this what would i want to know and um and also, you know, my, my son is 10, like Will at the moment. And so it was really important because he's super sporty. So he just like football, basketball, it's all sports. Yeah. And, you know, you see, I, you know, I even see it as a mum on the sidelines and, you know, someone's out for two weeks because they've got this with their foot and someone's this and, 
And I just wanted to create a program where I wasn't, you know, resting these kids from the things that they love to do. And so they could do this program, stay in the sports that they love, and I was still going to get the results for them. And I think, you know, that's so super important, like coming from sports podiatry world, it's how we approach an athlete, right? Like rest is probably the last little thing you're going to, you don't want to do it yeah. if you really can. Like that one's like, <laughs> just no, avoid it. you're trying yeah. to push it out. Yeah. Um, because it's so important for their mindset, their overall performance and, and who they are as a person. And I think, you know, just with this prefabricated or orthotic company, I think of them as little people. I, I'm not just thinking as the, just at the feet. I'm thinking of them as, you know, their whole body. And that's where IV exercise programs come in. I'd never do it in practice. I would never, yeah. ever issue an orthotic without an exercise program. So I couldn't, in all honesty, have a prefabricated orthotic company that was just dishing out these orthotics and not have these exercise programs behind them. I think there'd be a lot of podiatrists listening to this learning a lot who, yeah, who, who well, are just well, like, within, great, their own, you know? <laughs> within their own businesses, but whether, whether they use the product or yeah, even no, just look. how they, what they're currently doing in their own clinics. But I'm sure there's other podiatrists who've gone, wow, I've thought about having my own inner souls. Yeah. And I, I think the more the merrier. It's oh, like definitely. you said, everyone's going to have different markets. Some people may just go, you know, I'm going to make my own insult, but just target my own area and just yeah. become a local, a local business supplying this product. Yeah, there's no reason to feel scared that just because there's someone already there doing it, that you can't go in there and say, well, you know, I'm doing it. Maybe I might want to try and do it a bit better. And that's because um, we're always learning and we are growing as a profession. And um, I think you know, I was quite frustrated with what I could get in the market of kids in souls for those everyday active kids. Yeah. And that was part of why I went, you know, I'm going to, I'm actually going to go ahead and, and make those now. Um, and so that was, yeah, a big why for me. So, so with the, uh, the man, because you said you get it done overseas in yep. China, was it? Yeah. In um, China. You already had a relationship with that person with the yeah. life souls that you were doing beforehand. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So I was, I've been really fortunate. Um, you know, another thing, he just kind of fell into my lap years ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, I sought him out. Um, we experimented a bit with the life souls range and, um, you know, and then, and then moved in. So I had, it was a no brainer for me. I was going to have him make them because I knew the standard and the quality of, of what I would get produced there. Um, and yeah, look, it's just, I would love to have got them manufactured in Australia, but it's just not. Oh, it's not viable. I you know. Just, yeah, and I, I mean, it is a, it is a shame, but it you know, um, the manufacturer that I use, he's a he's a great man. You know, he's a family man himself, and um, yeah, we'd have a great relationship, and he he listens Which to what important. I want to achieve, and we work together, and it's yeah, it's been great. So what's next? What's next for kid zones? <laughs> have you um, have you thought about you've got it going at the moment? Have you thought about yeah. where you want to take it next? Or you don't want to divulge any secrets in case oh, no, I'm some not sneaky like... podiatrist sitting in a dark room at the moment? One of those bitter oh, twisted well, ones going, look, oh, I'm I was take there this. first, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, not at all. I think for me, um, I'm thinking more of a global scale now. So okay. um yeah, that's sort of where I'm heading over the next um three to six months, looking at that space. Um when I started Kid Souls, I literally was packing and shipping everything from home. Yeah. And I can tell you that is exhausting. <laughs> I, so I, I know like, you know, yeah. <laughs> Go to work, um, you know, be a podiatrist, come home, pack them all, get them to the post office in the morning and, and then go to work, be a podiatrist. And it was just like, it was rolling, rolling, rolling. And although it was, you know, the first time I sold one, I, I think I did like, laps around the um lounge room like an excited dog you know <laughs> Woohoo! someone wants to buy it from me um but then yeah it became it became sort of exhausting so fulfillment agencies now um where they sort of process and send the, the program and the package for me i mean the program or the way that i've set it up is it automatically links so as soon as someone purchases that program yeah. they instantly get an email from me that has like this is how you access your membership on my membership course they go in they'll see it all there and I've done it and staged it so week one opens up but they can't get into the other weeks because I want them to do 
that that stretching and strengthening program in that ah, right, regimented okay. so, so it's an online course that the, that they yeah. they go through so therefore you yeah. know if they've actually gone through it as well i do yes yes and i can see you know kind of what they've accessed as well um and yeah so it opens up week by week and they get a little email every week to just prompt the parents you know this is where we're up to this is where we should be as far as their symptoms are concerned yeah. if that's not the case then this is what we need to do um and then yeah it just kind of goes through and then at the end of that four weeks they get a little email saying you know you finished and you pretty much should be pain free and if you're not i want i want to know so um holler at me basically <laughs> um that's yeah great. so it is, and it's a, it, it really is a fantastic program. And, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to be at this time in my career where I, I can give back a little bit, you know. Yeah. Like, um, and, you know, 18 years of, of treating clinically and you kind of, you kind of, you know, you're in the trenches there, like day yeah. in, day out, like patients. And I only work three days a week now um, as a podiatrist, but I do that because I love it, you know, and I, and I choose to. And um, I don't know if I'd ever stop practicing clinically just because I, I really do enjoy it. And I know that, um, and I think most podiatrists out there would know, like we've got this beautiful ability to, to actually fix people and, mm. um, and help their quality of life. And I think if you can give back like that and you're helping another human being have a better life, like what an amazing thing to do, you know? Um, and I'm just, doing it, I'm just doing it in a in a different format, you know, like I'm, yeah. I'm helping all these kids and I, I really do think about them more long term. I don't want to just be that, um, you know, consumer driven dishing out all prefab orthotics to anyone and everyone that will take them. I, I really do want these programs to be done and I want parents to think about their kids overall, like lower limb health and what that means for their future. Because, you know, we've been there. We've seen kids that have come in at eight and, you know, we've seen them at 18, now even older. So we've seen what works and we've seen what doesn't work and we, and we can kind of track that. And I think, yeah. you know, that's that's fairly amazing position to be in this far down the track. So I, th I think it's fantastic. So if somebody was listening to this now, they want to, if they want to get in touch with you, just go to kidsoles.com yeah. and they can contact you through there. Yeah, through the contact page. They'll get through i'll do my best to get back quickly <laughs> <laughs> no that's right well you're, you're still obviously you're still busy because you're working three days a week and you're still you're running this business yeah uh, and you've got two kids yeah that you're inspiring <laughs> um so so stacy i want to i want to thank you for coming on the podiatry legends podcast oh, this thank has you been for fun me. you seemed very relaxed yeah look i'm i'm like in a space where i'm really happy with like where i am what i'm doing and I feel like this is where I'm supposed to be. Um, and I've also, you know, I've got that that great support network around me as well that are just like, go for it. My, my husband's amazing. Yeah. Um, and I think those times where I have felt that fear of, oh gosh, should I? He's like, you know, I probably wouldn't have done it if I didn't have him there kind of clapping me on. So <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really excited about the future of the business and um, you know, I, I, you know, will continue to work as a podiatrist as well. And I, and I, you know, I love podiatry and I also love that I've got this other avenue where I can, you know, explore that skill set in a different way. That is awesome. So once again, thank you for coming on the Podiatry Legends podcast, sharing part of your story and also what Kids Owls is all about. And just remind everybody, go to Kids Owls, K-I-D-Z-O-L-E-S.com if you want to check it out or if you want to connect with Stacey. So Stacey, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sorry if I like blabbled on for too long. <laughs> you have not blabbled on at all. It has been, it has been really good. Okay, and great. If it blabbled on, I would have said at about the 20 minute mark. Yeah. Okay, Stacey. Well, it was really good talking with you today. Um, <laughs> Give adios. me a little tap along, hey? <laughs> yes, I would have. Uh, I would have. I know I've got some um, sound effect buttons here, so I could I could have just started just pushing a big buttons. Horn. <laughs> big horn. Yeah, it says, come on, come on, it's all over. So, great. so thanks for coming on. And yeah. Uh, yeah, this has been fantastic. I've really enjoyed it. Oh, great. Me too. Thanks for having me.